back to the channel. Today's tutorial is going to be focused on a channel banner and a pretty simple one at that, but I figure I'd make a tutorial on it because the more simple banners we get out of the way, the more space we have or the more time we have for some of the more complicated banners. Now before I even get into the tutorial, I want to preface this by saying you can use Photopia to follow along if you can't afford Photoshop or don't want to pay for it. And as you can see, the layout between the two is pretty darn similar with many of the tools being in the same location. And while I don't know if the keyboard shortcuts like Control T, Control V, Control G all exist here, much of the same functionality does exist. Let's click New Project, for example, and it's all pretty straightforward with Height, then Create, and the tools are here. All along the side, we just hold down a little bit to pop up more options. And we have a bunch of settings here as well, including free transform and actually does look like they support some of the keyboard shortcuts, but instead of control T for free transform, it's alt control T with Photopia. And also opening any of the Photoshop templates that I make is also possible with Photopia and it makes everything exactly as it would be in Photoshop. Actually it has all the groups all the blending options. So let's say we make this a layer blending options. This looks really similar to how Photoshop would do it. Honestly, I don't know how this is legal considering how similar it is, but it's an amazing tool that I'm kind of surprised I didn't review up to now. Anyway, without delaying any further, let's just get into the tutorial. I'm going to start off by going to File, New, and the size we want is 800 by 200. Let's close out that extra one. Now I'm going to create a new layer in this corner and then delete the background because we don't need it. And now I'm going to drop in the image that I chose using Control V, Control T, and then let's go ahead and drag this down to a manageable size. And I quite like that. Now I'm going to do Control J and you'll see why in just a moment. This layer I'm going to go over to Filter blur gallery and field blur and here i'm going to blur it at about actually 15 pixels the default works fine for me so i'm going to click ok and i'll call this the base and let's put that into its own separate section and let's double click on name and call it the base area but we aren't going to come back here again this is more just organization purposes now we're going to create a new layer we're going to do Control g and let's call this the center Let's right click on the eyeball and make this blue, make sure it lines up well. Now we're going to come over to the left side, hold down the left mouse button to pop up more options and go over to the rectangle tool and let's drop this down. Now, as you can see, I didn't worry about the size because I'm going to come over to properties and pop that up. Now this is going to be the same between Photopia and here. So we'll go over to window, go down to properties. You can click it and it'll pop up. For Photopia, it's going to open here, though it will do the same for Photoshop. With Photoshop, you can take it, drag it to the side, and dock it there. With Photopia, it's stuck there, but that's fine. You can still access all the same settings. Now, I'm just going to drag this across. Actually, I don't even know why I mentioned properties. We're not going to be using it here. I just got into the bad habit of doing so. Anyway, let's make sure that is centered there. And I like that spacing we have on that edge there. So I'm going to repeat that spacing all the way around. Now, I'm sure there is a more proper way to do this, but I am stuck in my self-taught ways. So I'm going to use a little ruler and the ruler is basically just another shape. I'm going to stick there and then I'm going to drag it around to make sure the spacing is the same everywhere. All right. I organize it how I like it. I lied a little bit. I was not happy with those settings after I finished the shape I realized it was a bit too thick at the border so I brought it down to a bit more of a manageable size and there was the settings and properties here in the corner with the width and the height if you want to match that yourself and for some reason I always forget to mention it but I'm using alt and scrolling with the scroll wheel to move in and out now this layer that we copied we're gonna bring it down Either do right click, create clipping mask, or hold alt and click in between. 
And then as you can see, we have our nice unedited shape right there. Take that, go over to the rectangle tool, go to blending options, go over to stroke, and we're gonna be adding an inside white stroke of about, let's say six pixels, I like that. Now we're gonna come and grab our anime character this is just a quick one I grabbed. If you want to spend more time picking one out that looks a bit better, that's totally up to you. We call this the base, and let's call this the image. Let's call this one the character. Control T, go over to the width. Let's go ahead and flip that. Let's actually put her on to the other side so she's not going to block that wonderful tree. And you can always interchange this to make it a bit more unique for each banner. Now let's right click on her, go to blending options. We're gonna go over to stroke, not satin, stroke. Make sure this is on the outside. And I don't wanna use six pixels again. I'm probably gonna go with something like three. And depending on the character, you can see whoever rendered this one did a bit of a messy job. So it isn't perfect in some cases. But instead we can do a drop shadow as well. And then let's bring this down. So yeah, it's up to how your image looks. In this case, I wasn't in the mood to go around and clean up all of the messed up edges. So instead I did a drop shadow, which works fine as well because the whole idea is to get the character off of the background and have them stand out a tad. Now for the last step, we're gonna go and add the text. So I'm gonna create a new layer, do Control G, and let's call this the text. And then the eyeball, let's make it violet. Now I'm gonna sample a color from her eye to get that yellowish color, though we can adjust it in a second after we see how it looks. And I held down the eye, as you can see in the corner, to do so. It's a shortcut or if you can't use that shortcut the eyedropper tool is right over here now on the text tool I'm gonna click down I'm gonna make sure I'm using the Edo font and I'll include that in the description so you can go ahead and download it for yourself and I'm just gonna type out rules now I'm gonna do control a and then blow this up and when I blow it up, I want to make sure that it does not go outside of this center section. Let's make sure it is centered. I'm going to right click, go to blending options, go over to stroke. And we want a nice white stroke on this. And then let's add a drop shadow as well to help it pop just a little bit more. So this yellow does not work the best. I might end up keeping it though. Let's try a few other colors. Just because... Oh, well, the pink actually looks pretty nice as well. I might use that then. And of course you can play around with the text, add a gradient. So we go to blending options, go over to gradient overlay. On a gradient, make sure the opacity is all the way up. Otherwise it's going to blend a little bit. So a nice stroke for this might be a mix of the pink, I'm oh sorry, the purple, and then some of the pink. I do not want that there. That might be a cool one for you to try out. Other than that, we can go ahead and go to File, Export, Save for Web to save, compress it, or File, Save As, and choose PNG. Now I forgot to mention to actually find these backgrounds, all I did to search it was anime scenic wallpaper, and you'll find a large variety of them for you to choose from. So now, other than that, the tutorial has concluded. I hope you all found it useful, and have an awesome day.